right, uh, we're going to take some questions. And just a reminder that if you've got a question for a specific person, just address them. And then if you want both to answer, uh, indicate that as well. But uh, we'll open it up for questions. Well, I think, you know, you look at the program in total, um, and I think that, you know, I've been pretty clear with my statements, and certainly in the past, um, it would be, I don't want to use the word foolish, but I think it would be uh, not, not, not very, uh, not looking in the future, um, if you take into consideration what Chris Lowry has done as a head coach. You know, when, when we, when Chris was hired here many years ago and when he was given a contract extension, there was a reason why Paul Kowalczyk thought he was the right guy, and there's a reason why the institution as well as the athletic director thought he was the right guy to lead the program. And that's kind of in good times and bad. I think in a perfect world, we just keep winning, and that goes on until, you know, we get to the Final Four and win the national championship. But sometimes there's bumps in the road, and sometimes there's, those bumps are over an extended period of time. But when you are involved with a coach, I would use almost the example of involved in a marriage. It's easy to really get divorced when things aren't going well. But it's the, can you see past that and see, hey, this is the person that I got married to. And maybe we're off track just a little bit now. But I'm, I was confident of why I got married to that person. So we're going to ride this rough patch through because I know we can make it together. So I, I hope that, uh, you know, just saying let's, you know, change coaches, that would be, in my opinion, certainly the easy way out. Um, but I do not feel that that would be the best thing for the program at this time. Well, you know, there is, there is a certain amount that no matter what, when you're winning, the fans will come, and when you're not, they're, they're going to come less. We realize that. I think that, you know, myself, the coaching staff, you know, our athletic staff, what we need to do is get the word out that, you know, we want you to come to Saluki basketball. You know, we might be in a rough patch right now, but the reality is we've got a lot of solid, long-time supporters of, of SIU basketball, and certainly there's some casual fans who are going to make the decision to come or not to come. But I'm pretty confident that we've got a big core of support. And it's up to all of us to get out in the community, the Rotary Clubs, the Lions Club, the Elks, <coughs> et cetera, et cetera, and talk to people and keep inviting them back to, you know, the arena. I mean, we have did a $30 million renovation with video boards and things like that and try to do reunions and, and a million other things to attract fans, not only for the basketball, but a lot of value-added stuff. And we hope that they will see that. And plus, you know, I guess also our sincere efforts on trying to turn it around. You know, there's a lot of places that have fickle fans. Um, I don't see this as one of them. We do realize that we have to win to attract the fans and get back to sellouts. But I'm very confident that we've got a, a group of hardcore Saluki fans that can see past, you know, this, this momentary uh, struggles that we're, we're uh, going through right now. And I think they're going to come back. Well, you know, that goes hand in hand. I think a lot of people, you know, when we, uh, when we did our, um, our Saluki Way uh, campaign, um, those were payable over a five-year period of time, most of those commitments. So people are, in effect, I, I think our core fans in it for the long haul. But at the same time, yeah, I have concerns about a great many issues, how many tickets we're going to sell in football, contributions for basketball, you name it. But it is our staff's job, as well as our coaches' jobs, to get out to the public ask people to keep supporting us, make a compelling case, and, um, you know, that's kind of the blueprint for asking people to stay involved. Chris, I know that Ms. Top Richards with KFES uh, mentioned retention as being important, uh, and you mentioned you like a lot of the guys that you have coming back. Do you see uh, more turnover coming in the next season with some of the <coughs> guys? Well, I, you know, I think the number one thing is that we haven't met with all of our players. Now, we, uh, you know, we, we expect everybody to be back. Obviously, that was at the conference tournament. That's going to return. So, you know, 
we we have a player and coach meetings after the season, and you know at this point we're not we're not expecting anything crazy to happen. Chris, I'm Sam from WIDB. You talked about events. You step back into the game. Uh, is there any way, in particular, at least through the uh, offseason, going to the preseason uh, for next year? Is there anything that you're going to do to at least get the student body interested in the games? Like we saw with Bruce Weber and Kyle Is there anything that like that? Well, I think the number one thing is that um, we stopped doing that because we brought them to the arena. We brought pizzas. We, we, we actually have done that still, but we haven't publicly said we do stuff like that. I think that's the number one thing with me is that we just we, we, we got to continue to get to them um, and get the students to come back. And that's, but it's, it's just like anything else. You have to, you have to give them something to want to be around. And, you know, I've, you know, I've always been a part of, you know, um, the student side of it because I understand the component. Um, and we've done pizza parties in the arena after practice and had them be the, had them come to practice last five minutes. Um, but I, I think that uh, the dog pound has been the big, the biggest thing that I've been associated with, it, as opposed to the students, because the, the you know the, the incentives of being a dog pound and be able to sit there, we have to find out what 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 the students want. I think more and look at it at that point, and then, and then go from there. How has uh, Chris? How has uh, this whole situation affected the recruiting Well, I I think the number one thing is that. Um, you know, all the, all the recruits that signed are coming here. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, we've had media people call them and ask them questions that they shouldn't. And that's why there's no story about it, because they all said they were coming. And, you know, that's, that's not really fair to them, and it's not fair to their parents. They're coming here, obviously, because of me. But number one is because of this place, you know. And, and, that, and that is the, the number one reason. And to question that, in a time where it's an unknown, is wrong. And, but these guys are coming, and that's the good part about recruiting. We sign them; they're coming; they're excited. Um, you know. I think with 2012. Well, like yeah. I mean, we have a commitment still in yeah. 12. So, I mean, those and, and like I said, these are all kids that knew us when they were little kids, and 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 saw how kids played for me and want to be a part of that that experience. Not the experience that we've suffered through the last couple of years. But the experience of seeing us and seeing how hard we play, and 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 hearing things as a kid when you're a comment, hear a commentary say, "These guys always play hard." These, this is if you want to know what it means to play hard, watch this program, and and those are the reasons why we've gotten the kids we have right now. Mario, when will you announce which assistant coaches are going to let go? Um, you know, I, I I can't, you know, determine as at the present time when uh, you know all the the contractual stuff will be completed so we'll move as fast as we can uh, obviously you know we we need to and want to um, you know uh, get new assistant coaches in certainly the right assistant coaches so we're not going to you know necessarily rush out and do something but at the same time you know these things take a little time so you know don't know the answer to that but bear with us a little bit Chris, I'm Joe Augusto with WIDB. Uh, you talked about how you expect all the players that were with you on the St. Louis trip to come back. What does that mean with uh, Gene Key? I mean, it's still the same as, as far as player meetings are concerned. Um, with, with him, he had he had different different issue than the rest of the team. And <coughs> dealing with, you know, from the suspension stuff. And, um, you know, I'm going to still have my meeting with him. He's still a part of the program. And, you know, it'll be addressed after we visit. No, I that 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 process was handled by the other two players is what I'm saying, and the right way. So that's where it's at with with him. Well, I mean, that's that's obviously stuff that you know that I we obviously don't want to probably share any of that with that was said. But the thing about it is, change came about from it, and that's the most important thing. It, like I said, it can't be the status quo; it has to be change. Um, I we both talked about some of the things we talked about in the meeting, 
but as far as specifics, um, I, it was a very good meeting. When you look at the, the issues, what, what's the, as far as the, for you, the Maybe the thing that, that has to change specifically that, that I need to do better for this to go forward. Well, I think that I got to be the head recruiter again. I got to be out. You know, that was my deal. I've worked like an assistant. That's, you know, that's why, that's the reason, you know, that I've had success because I've been gone all the time. I've worked as if I wasn't the head coach. And I think that's the number one thing that I've, about myself, that I have to do more of and get back to doing again. Well, I think, you know, I don't think it's fair to discuss the specifics of that side of it. It's, it's really, it's my program. So if I, the, the head's got to get right before the body does. So, you know, I think that, you know, that's, that'll be addressed once I correct my own issue. Yeah, um, you know, that's a great word you use, rumors, because um, there was a ton of them on that and many, many other issues, and that's just what they were. Um, I will say this, that there is not one topic that has to do with SIU athletics that finances aren't virtually at the top of the consideration list in everything that goes on. Uh, certainly with the way um, the, of the financial shape the athletic program is in, the university and the state of Illinois. So, you know, um, as far as discussions on finances, there's not one thing that Mark Scali, you know, our CFO isn't brought in on because every single thing is affected. But um, I'd answer by saying you used a terrific word and that was rumors.